glory, risen, conquering sun. Endless is thy victory, thou, O death, has won. Angels in bright raiment roll the stone away, kept the folded grave clothes where thy body glory, risen, conquering sun. Endless is thy victory, thou, O death, has won. Lo, Jesus meets us, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters The church with gladness, hymns of triumph sing. For her Lord now liveth, death has lost its sting. Thine be the glory, thine own son. Endless is thy victory. Thou, O death, has won. No more we doubt thee, glorious Prince of life. Life is not without thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy deathless love. Say through Jordan to thy home above. Thine be the glory of the conquering sun. Endless is thy victory, thou old death has won. We stay standing, I'll open the word and then we'll say a prayer for the for the offering. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Word of God made flesh. Your Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Amen. Lord, this Palm Sunday we pause and we think about how much you gave for us, Lord. You held nothing back and truly our hearts are moved. May this offering bring glory to your name. Amen. And let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Inside the order of service you'll see the statement of faith, if you'll say it with me, the faith of the new church is summarized as follows. I believe in one God, the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is the divine trinity. A saving faith is to believe on him. Evil actions ought not to be done because they are of the devil and from the devil. Good actions ought to be done 
because they are of God and from God. Moreover, these things ought to be done by man as of himself. But he should believe that they are from the Lord, acting with him and through him. Thank you. Please be seated. We could have the reading of Scripture today. Paul, if you'd, would you come up for the reading? As Paul comes, take for a moment with me and think about something in sacred text that has challenged you. Maybe something that you found hard to understand and you've kind of wrestled with it over the time and you've struggled with it. Well, I cannot read the Lord's last week coming into Jerusalem and his being accused, found guilty of something that he didn't do and then sentenced to death. I can't read that without being moved and wishing that it didn't have to be that way. But I find comfort and peace in knowing that the Lord did that out of love for us. He completed his work of redemption to give us freedom. Palm Sunday, we're going to look at the Lord coming into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And this is another one of those ones on a lower level that I really struggled with. I couldn't understand why did the Lord make a triumphal entrance. That's how Zechariah described it. Triumphal entrance, but yet he was riding on a donkey. For me, it was like, Lord, you are king. We should honour you. Men and women on earth are honoured as royalty with golden chariots and entourages. But here is the Lord coming, riding on a donkey. So I made a challenge at some point in my life to look into that. Why did you do that, Lord? And that's what we're going to look at this morning as, as a whole church. And you will discover, along with me, if you hadn't looked at this already, it had to be this way. It could have been no other way. It had to be this way. And what we find is going to be both an encouragement and a blessing and a challenge for our life. Paul, if you would read that for us. Reading from the book of Matthew. <clears throat> now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them, and they brought the donkey and the colt and put them on their cloaks, and he sat on them. And most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. We are blessed when we hear the words of the Lord and we obey them. Amen. Amen. So again, if you'll turn to the very back of the order of service, we will have Holy Supper now and to prepare our hearts, Matthew 26, 29 says, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. What could the Lord have meant here? I will not drink this anew. I will not drink this again until I drink it anew in the kingdom. Disciples were breaking bread and having that final meal with the Lord right before his final act of salvation. But we are now looking back. We have this advantage 
we are the ones who are fulfilling this scripture here that says he will drink it with us anew in his kingdom. Secrets of Heaven says, when a person is being regenerated and becoming a new spiritual being, the Lord's kingdom is being established in such a person and they are becoming the church. As often as good follows from love and faith is at work with someone, this is what constitutes the Lord's coming. Consequently, the Lord's resurrection on the third day, the third morning, embodies the truth that the Lord rises daily. Indeed, every single moment in the minds of regenerating people. Just bow our heads for a second and we'll just say a prayer. Dear Lord, you are with us now as we break bread with you. Rise again in our hearts, in our minds, in our will. We love you. Amen. Ken, would you come forward and help me? On that faithful last night with the disciples in that upper room, the Lord took the bread and he lifted it to heaven and he gave a blessing and then he broke that bread and he said, this is my body. It's been broken for you. Take and eat. The Word of God tells us to come, to see, to taste. The Lord is good. Again, on that faithful night, the Lord took the cup and he lifted it up and he gave a blessing. And he said to his disciples, This is my blood, shed for the remission of the sins of men. Drink ye all of it.
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If any man will walk in that light, he will know life. So in the moment, I'll have the rest of the children come to the front. Actually, they could probably come to the front while we sing Hosanna. Does anybody know what Hosanna means? It's a word that we use a lot in church circles, and we know it's special, we know it's holy, but often we don't know what it means. Thank you, Chris. It, 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 even the word Anna has a kind of please or thanksgiving to it, and the ho or the hosanna is save. Please save us. It means save us now. Yeah. As children come, let's together sing Hosanna in the highest. Sunday, many, many thousands of years ago, the Lord came into Jerusalem, and this is what people were crying out and shouting in the streets, Hosanna. We get the children up the front, most of the children up the front. You, you'll be able to help us, won't you? That's great. Come take some palm branches, because I want us to, to really think for a moment about all the things that are going on here. Just grab some palm branches there, children. There we go. We, uh, this is what you call um, first century balloons. First century balloons. Do we have enough there? Oh, there we go. We're good. Oh, that's good because we need to give it to Shauna. Now, let's take for a moment. Let's take for a moment. We're back there on those dusty streets at the outskirts of Jerusalem. And here comes the Lord now. He's actually coming into Jerusalem. Open, we open the way for him, open the gates of the city, and we think to ourselves, these dusty, dirty streets, they're not worthy to carry the Lord. What can we do? You know, today we roll out carpets, don't we? Red carpets and things like that. But the people, they took whatever they had, their, their cloaks, their palm branches, and they began to throw them into the streets. So let's throw those into the streets there to make way for the Lord. Just throw them out there like a like a pathway for the Lord to come through. Come on, let's throw it out there, so I'm going to have your best shot. <laughs> and in comes the Lord, he's riding on that colt. Do you notice that in Scripture it says that it was a donkey uh, and a colt? 
And that's because this cult had never been ridden. Never. Now, if you know anything about cults, or asses, or mules, and there's a little bit of difference. Who can tell me the difference between a mule and a normal ass? A mule is frustrated horse at Wow, come up the front here, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> a mule is actually uh, when you breed a donkey with a horse. So there's a little bit of something there in the donkey of the horse. Remember I said to you earlier, why didn't the Lord come riding into Jerusalem on a horse? Does that kind of make sense? I mean, for me, as, as I read the scriptures, I go, but why not? I mean, even today, people riding in on a white horse has the most powerful significance, doesn't it? We know that someone riding on a white horse is a powerful, victorious leader or king or something like that. In those days, the donkey, though, was a very special royal creature. We call it a beast of burden, but it was, a, as I heard recently, a donkey, for its size and weight, is stronger than any horse. But they're quite a calm creature, too. I mean, if something's going, lots of noises going on, and people are shouting Hosanna and getting carried away, the donkey's just going to walk straight through the middle of it and not be disturbed. Not so with a great stallion. Unless a great stallion's been trained carefully, it will run. It will take off. The donkeys are very, very loyal as well. Extremely loyal. They connect to an owner, a master, and they become very loyal to that master. I was only just talking to Russell yesterday, and he was telling me this story. I hadn't heard this. I thought it was a great story. He was hearing, he heard the story about a family who took their children for a walk through a, a forest sort of area and they actually hired a donkey to carry their youngest child on the long walk with them. They thought that would be a great idea. Little did they know how significant that was going to be. Because as they went further into, the, into this venture walk, they started spotting a mountain lion at a distance, tracking them. And it got closer, and it got closer, and it got closer, and then something phenomenal happened. They took their child and began to sort of cower. This donkey turned and attacked the mountain lion. It is so powerful a creature with its back legs and biting that it killed the mountain lion and saved these people's lives. There's this kind of loyalty this donkey has as it's taking the master and carrying it on its back. So here we read today the crowd were throwing their cloaks and they were throwing their branches on the ground. And in our heart right now today, just say after me, Dear Lord, you live in my heart. May you ride into Jerusalem where I will throne you, King of Kings. So throwing our cloaks on the ground and our palm branches is talking about throwing what we understand of the Lord. You know, we, we throw it there for him to walk on. This is my best understanding. Whatever they could find. Palm branches, there were plenty of them. We've got plenty of palm branches at home, don't we, Renee? We cannot get rid of them. And when they grow, they're abundantly. So people were taking their cloaks off and putting it on the ground. And they were throwing the palm, any palm branch they could find. Something to make a way for the Lord. So this is what makes the way for the Lord. Cloaks are the truths that we learn from church. And the palm branches are some of the usefulness of that truth that we're learning. We throw them on the ground to make way for the Lord in our heart. But then they began to shout, Hosanna, which we were talking about before. They were declaring out loud, save us, save us, save us. Can you, can you children help me today to do that? And maybe adults to encourage us. Are we ready? The Lord's coming here. It's coming in. Let's make way. We've thrown the palm branches down. Let's begin. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Amen. We're making way for the Lord. We're not just, he's not just going to come quietly in. He's coming in with a shout. Once again, that donkey wasn't moved. Just kept walking. This great crowd, great noise. So loud, the rest of Jerusalem were hearing this and going, what's going on here? But what about this donkey? You know, this donkey that, that Jesus rode on. 
wasn't any ordinary donkey. Back then, the donkeys they had in Jerusalem that they used to breed for these tasks were very fierce and wild. They called them an onager. Very wild donkey. So this uh, donkey, if it did not want to move, no one would make it move. And maybe that's part of the reason why its mother was there as well. It would follow its mother. The, cult, the mother and the colt. And Jesus obviously rode on the colt as the disciples carried it along. But you notice in the reading, the donkey was tied up. He'd been tied up, never ridden, tied up. So I have to get some helpers here. Would you, would, would you give me a hand? Come on. And, and Shauna, would you come give me a hand? Okay. Just say there, Matthew, I want you to stand over there front of the big screen. You can be the Lord. I'll be the donkey. I was thinking, who do I tie up? And I thought, no, you can't tie a child up in church. That's not appropriate. So I brought a little rope here. Okay, I'll be the donkey. And, and Matthew, you're going to oh, tie it up here. And you're going to call for me. Say, donkey, come here. And I'm like, I can't. I'm all tied up. So then you're going to send a couple of angels. Angels, a couple of angels, please come and untie me. Two disciples, a couple of angels, came and untied the donkey. Thank you. You may be seated. That was very helpful. Again, the Word of God is saying two, two disciples were sent. Why two? It's the number of witness. Have you ever found you're reading something in the Bible and suddenly a light bulb goes on in your head? You go, oh, I see something you hadn't seen before. You ever had that experience? That's called a witness, too. So you are all tied up at your life at times, and then the Lord, through his words, coming along and saying, I need you. But notice here that in scriptures, this is one of those rare moments where Jesus needed something from others. Every other time in scripture, it's what do you need of me? He was continually giving of himself. But here he needed this donkey. For a number of reasons. Let's have a look at why he so much needed this donkey and why it wasn't a great white horse like I wanted it to be. How wise the Lord is. I always find the Lord wiser than I am. Let's have a look here. Here's an example of Belam. Is that how you would say it, Gay? Belam or Belam? Belam, yeah. Belam. He was a prophet. And he rode around on a donkey. Most of the kings rode around on donkeys. Uh, when Solomon dedicated the temple, he came in on a mule. Remember, the mule is a little bit different to, to a donkey in that it's spread with a horse. And when Absalom took the kingdom from his father, King David, peacefully, but he still did it, he, it was, it was a, a coup, he then got his father's donkey and rode around Jerusalem, showing that he was king. So these people understood the symbolism of someone riding in to Jerusalem on a donkey. Here is Balaam riding on a donkey. And he's a prophet, so angels talk to him. But in this case, he couldn't see the angel, but the donkey could. How often is it that I understand what I should do, but my heart's still not in it? I'm still not doing what I should. Isn't that true? And we find sometimes we know we should do something. Even the donkey knows there's an angel there. But Balaam is so blind. Now this is when a miracle happens. Because see, this donkey is going to protect his master. Even though his master's beating him. You stupid donkey, move, move. Nope, donkey would not move. And then the Lord gives the donkey the ability to turn and speak to Balaam. And he says, I've never mistreated you. All these years I've served you while you beat me. Right now there's an angel in front of us and he will kill us. His sword is drawn. And Balaam gets very humble at that moment and realizes his mistake. What about some other stories? Can we think of any other stories in the Bible where donkeys are used? Famous, famous, pretty, pretty famous stories. What was that one? We're all big kids here. You're allowed to throw it out. Sarah, what was the story? On oh, the what? Oh, the donkey spoke. Yeah, yeah, the donkey spoke. God opens its mouth to speak. That's true. It's not a Bible story, but Simpson in World War One, and that that donkey was so loyal to him. Yes. Under gunfire. Yes. It didn't even. Flin it, it, it saved hundreds of men. That donkey. Because it didn't flinch. Mm. Isn't that incredible? It stayed where he was. Yeah. Wait till you discover what this donkey is. Hmm. 
this stubborn, fierce beast of burden that is willing to carry the Lord. But here is Mary. I mean, so it's kind of a, it closes the loop, doesn't it? There's Jesus riding on a donkey right there, but he's still in mum's tummy, isn't he? He's riding there. And of course, Joseph doesn't look too happy because he doesn't get a donkey. He's just got to, he's got to walk the whole way. She's getting, you know, of course she couldn't walk that walk. So, but look at Mary, she's looking down at the shepherd, the shepherd boy, and she's kind of imagining, will my son be a shepherd? Oh, he will be the, sh the, the chief of all shepherds. Another story in the Bible. <clears throat> oh, actually, this is where Jesus says, Truly I say to you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. So you children today have an advantage over us adults, isn't it? They really do. The kingdom of God is open to you. It's very easy to come in. As adults, we must learn to return to being a child if we want to come in. What could that possibly mean? What is the Lord getting at here? Why do we have to be like the child to come into the kingdom of heaven? What is it about children that we sometimes lack as adults? Beautiful. Wisdom and innocence. Oh, the two married together. Both are perfect. The wisdom of the child is to say, I trust you, mum, dad, and I will follow your instructions. That's the wisdom of the child. And it's the innocence of the child as well, because innocence actually means I want to be led by you. So then think about us adults. <sighs> We've worked hard to not be led around by adults anymore, and we want to rule our own lives and have our own <laughs> choices and decisions. But Jesus says, okay, but if you want to come into the kingdom, you must relearn this willingness to be led. Okay, the, the donkey's untied, and it's willing to be led. Now, I can't, I mean, this is a legend. So, but this is one of those donkeys, it's quite common. And the legend says that this particular don donkey is the lineage or the, or the species, I suppose would be the right word, genie species, that, that carried the Lord. And the legend goes like this. The donkey was very sensitive. It never, the colt had never ridden, let anyone ride on its back. And when the Lord got on its back, there was an immediate connection. And this donkey sensed the burden the great burden the Lord was carrying. And so after they came into Jerusalem, for that week the donkey wouldn't leave. Everywhere the Lord went, the donkey followed him. Even to the point that when eventually the Lord was sentenced to death on Galgoth, there the donkey was up on the hill, standing there, unable to look up at the Lord, horrified at what was happening. But that afternoon, before the sun turned dark, a shadow of the cross fell across the back of this donkey. And the Lord looked down and gave a benediction. And that's why this donkey, according to the legend today, still carries a cross on its back. Now, is that true? I don't know. But I do know that God designed this beautiful donkey to carry a cross on its back. And every Easter, we are reintroduced to this story of Jesus riding on a donkey, aren't we? So I think that's magnificent and powerful that it reminds us of the burden it carried, isn't it? The Lord was finishing his great work to redeem us, to free us, so that we could be saved. And there it is, like for the rest of eternity now, carried around on its back, cross. Incredible. But, now this is more for the children, of course, it's, a, it's, it's an all-in service. We have some rather postmodern legends today, like, is it? Shrek. Isn't it? Isn't that? And I just found this funny. Right from the start of Shrek, I thought it's funny that his sidekick was the donkey, not a horse. No? Donkey. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, a good faithful servant, but if this thing doesn't want to move, it's not going to move. Now think about your walk with God. That could be you. You could be a good faithful servant to God, but there could come a time where the Lord calls for you and you might go, <coughs> I'm not moving. Let that not be so. Say after me, Lord. Let me be willing, innocent, humble to carry you. Amen. Yeah. Now, this second Shrek, as I'm bringing it up, because I just this made me laugh and laugh. In this, they have to regain the love of Fiona, and 
a spell's been cast on her, so they've got to try and find some way to break the spell, and they end up taking some magic that goes totally wrong. And it turns Donkey into this. A white stallion! And I just laughed. I laughed because when we understand what's happening here in this Easter story, the Lord is coming to us riding on this donkey. How is he coming back? Right, riding on the white stallion. And even Shrek gets to play his part. The unregenerate ego, or is that ogre? I don't know, you decide. The unregenerate ego gets to be regenerated and we're made handsome and beautiful and we're made in the image of God. So I just laughed at that. I could see what was going on in the subtext of that story, isn't it? Mm. And we make these stories for children and somehow deep in our heart we know these great archetypes that the Bible's been telling to us year after year after year. The Lord coming and riding on, the cro uh, uh, on a donkey. So there's the Lord coming back. There's two comings here. And we read this morning in Holy Supper how every time, every time we, we are thinking on the Lord and we're loving Him and we're letting Him change us, He is coming again inside us, isn't He? It's the white horse, not the donkey. So something's going on here we want to get to it. Let's have a look here. We can read here in sacred, oh, we can read it in Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Everyone say, to me. To me. Amen. What does he mean? He means that people had the prophecy of Isaiah and they didn't know what it meant. They had no idea that Jesus was going to come as a suffering servant. Who here wants to suffer? Amen. Every hand should go up. Now, every hand should go up because did Jesus, did Jesus suffer poverty? Not one bit. Everything that was needed for the mission was always provided. Amen. He didn't suffer poverty. Did Jesus suffer sickness? No, he went around healing the sick. And if we're ever sick, there's power in Jesus to heal us. Did Jesus suffer the rejection of uh, family and friends? No. I mean, there were times, but no, he had around him disciples. He did suffer the rejection of the world, and so should we, isn't it? If we're actually following the Lord, there'll be times where the world will be shouting, yes, Hosanna, yes, and there'll be other times they'll be shouting at you. It's just how it is. So we are called to suffer with the Lord, but here's how we are to suffer, in that we be humble, that we be willing to be led, that we be willing to serve others. That's it. That's the suffering the Lord has called you to, that's what this story of Easter is telling us. Come humbly, not waging war, come humbly looking to serve people. That's the burden that the Lord wants us to carry. He says, cast all your troubles onto me. Give me all your troubles, Matthew. All of them. No, that's too many, Darren. No, they're not. Give them all to Jesus, Matthew. All of them. And Jesus says, I'm going to give you my burden back. But I'm humble and I'm meek and my burden is light. And that's the burden that he asks of us, is that we just love each other. Really. When you start to do this, you find it's not only easy, it is the best life. Outwardly, yes, I'm a donkey. I'm a beast of burden. Inwardly, I'm carrying the glory of God. Carrying the glory of God. How? On a white horse? No, on a humble, faithful donkey. He goes on to say, Isaiah... He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. What was his grief? Our fallen state. That was his grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. We despised him. We esteemed him not. Here's what Secrets of Heaven... Oh no, there's Zechariah. Sorry, Zechariah 9.9. 9. says, Behold Jerusalem of Zion, the king comes to you meek and lowly, riding on a donkey. And it's not the donkey that is meek and lowly, although we should be meek and lowly. It's the Lord. He's coming with this purpose to save us. He's coming. When we read about his second coming, he's coming to vanquish our foes there. That's the time to vanquish the foes, to get, to get rid of the enemy. But here, it's such a beautiful, gentle, I'm coming to save you. And again, the secrets of heaven. Oh no, sorry, I, I, must, I must talk about this. That's right. This is probably the strongest Old Testament story we have that links to Jesus coming into Jerusalem. It's Abraham taking his son on an ass with cut wood. He's being tested by God. Who can remember what the test was? Do you remember this terrible test? 
Yeah, yeah. The, the adults are shaking their head because we, we just can't fathom such a test. Can, do none of the children know the test that was happened? God says to Abraham, Abraham, I've given you this beautiful son. Now take him up to the mountain I show you. And there I want you to sacrifice him. You're like, what? It's a test. God wasn't, seri- it wasn't actually seriously asking Abraham to sacrifice uh, Isaac. We don't know that till the end. Because when they get there, and even Isaac saying, Dad, all this wood that you've cut for a sacrifice, we didn't bring a ram. Don't worry, son. God will provide. Wow, this is a very gripping story, isn't it? Because this is the story. Here is Jesus riding into Jerusalem right there. Who is Jesus? He is the Father in human form. His very soul is Jehovah. But he has his form that we call the Son of God that's riding into Jerusalem to finish his work, to, to finish, to face his final enemy, death. So in the morning, Abraham rose up early and saddled his ass, and he took two of his servants with him, and Isaac his son, and he split pieces of wood with the burnt offering, and they rose up and went to the place which God had told them. Here's what we learn when we read Swedenborg, what Swedenborg has to say about this. He says, <clears throat> and saddled his ass means the natural man which he prepared this is clear from the meaning of an ass dealt with elsewhere. So we're being told here in Secrets of Heaven, the ass that Jesus rode represents his whole life he was preparing his natural man to fight every of our enemies, including death, and overcome them. Now, let's think about this for us. What, what's happening here today? This is still happening. Jesus is riding into your hearts this morning. So who is this donkey? that's going to carry him in your heart. Jesus is saying to us today, prepare your natural man. This earthly life cannot be compared to the glory of the resurrection. We are going to receive resurrected bodies that will never die. There's your white stallion, right there. But, to become the white stallion that can carry the Lord, first, we have to prepare our natural man, isn't it? First, we must be willing to carry the Lord in this life. And what is it that we're carrying? A simple, his simple instructions to love each other. Matthew, do well. You know, do well. Study hard. Do well, mate. You know, that's, that's love. Jesus wants us to love each other. You know, we're going to upset each other at times. We're going to make us want to bite each other and be stubborn. And you're not going to untie me and lead me around. That's how we're going to feel at times. But when it comes to the Lord, He's saying, stay open, stay willing. Let let there be somewhere in your heart where you can carry me in this world. Carry my will around in this world. Amen? Yes. Okay. Okay. So we've talked about the fact that when we are humble and when we're innocent, we are being the donkey that's carrying the Lord. Say after me, dear Lord, Lord, teach me me how to carry carry your will into this world. Amen. It's a light burden, but that's what we're here for. To do if we do this, we can also become the white stallion. Right? This is this is the, the destiny of God. In the first coming, I live humbly and serve. In the second coming, the Lord has promised my enemies, all my enemies, which are selfishness and sin, will be driven out. Amen. So we're coming to the close here, but here's a final reading from Secrets of Heaven which just really, I find it's very moving. It's very telling, and it helps us be humble. Let's read this together. It says, As regarding truth purified from all falsity, it should be recognized pure truth cannot exist, cannot reside with anyone. Can any of us say we've really got the truth? No. It's, not, it's just not possible. We're all carrying various ideas of who the Lord is and what He wants of us. None of us can have absolute truth. Right? In fact, my ego doesn't want the truth. It wants to confirm exactly what it wants to get what it wants. Right. But it goes on to say it cannot be both because <clears throat> falsity, uh, falsity issues constantly from the evil present and firmly fixed within us and because truths are interconnected. Therefore, if one falsity is present, worse still, if a number are present, the actual truths remaining are consequently defiled and something of falsities in them. 
children, do you do you think you have some strange, you know, strange, uh, some ideas about God you're not sure about? Is that would that be fair to say? There's some things about God you still don't understand. Yeah, I think I do. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. What about us adults? Do do can we admit that maybe we we get some things wrong? We have some false ideas about God. But it goes on to say. Truth is said to be purified from falsity when a person can be preserved by the Lord in the good of innocence. There's our right, there we are being the donkey, carrying the Lord right there. If we'll let the Lord lead us and show us how to carry his will, it goes on to say, innocent consists in acknowledging nothing but evil resides in oneself and that any good comes in from the Lord and also in believing that one neither knows nor perceives anything, including the truth of faith, if left to oneself only without the Lord's help. So I, I might regularly wake up in the middle of the night and I'll sense something of the Lord's presence and I'll pull back. I'll go, Lord, I'm, I don't really feel worthy of your presence. I don't. Because there's still evil inside me. There's still evil inside all of us. But what we have to do is simply acknowledge that. Acknowledge it. Uh, and say, Lord, help me. That's it. Say after me, Lord, Lord I, believe. I believe. Help my unbelief. Okay. Amen. And when we do that, what we're being told here is that, that we're letting the Lord keep on leading us into more and more innocence. What is it to be innocent? It's to say, I'm not really that good. But I love God, God is good, and with your help, God, we can do this. Uh, my back's available, right on my back, Lord. Mm. Amen? Amen? Carry the Lord in that way. Yeah. Okay. Now, it's my hope that from here on in, we, you know, we're going to keep seeing this story. Every year, Palm Sunday is going to come around, and we're going to hear the story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem. It's my hope. But children, for the rest of your life, you'll remember this message. And you'll say, that's right. I need to let God take the, the reins of my life and lead me. And let him and carry his will into, into my life. The last thing I want us to leave you with today is, and this really bugged me too. How is this a triumphant entry? A triumphal entry, I should say. You know, and here, is, um, here are the crowds. Hosanna, save us! And one week later, they're saying, kill him. Kill him! Crucify him! Wow. This, 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 imagine the burden of the Lord. One minute, save us. And one week later, kill him. Isn't it? Well, we're guilty. As long as we acknowledge that we would all do that. Okay? So how is this a triumphal entry? In this, if we will keep on humbling our lives and letting the Lord live in our heart and carry His will into the world, if we'll just keep doing that again and again, we're going to make mistakes. If we will keep doing that, the promise is that He will come and He will transform us into that great white stallion. We will be made into His image. We will receive resurrection life. Am I going to make mistakes? I promise you. One minute I'm loving Him, the next minute I'm like, oh, Lord, what are you doing? in my life. That's the nature of things. But here is the triumphal entry. If you are willing to let him in, you'll win. Amen? Say after me, Lord, with you, we win. Amen. So this Easter, as we go forth, we have, a new we have this uh, assignment for us. Let's have a quick look at the takeaway. We, it's our need to humble and lower this, this body of mind, this earthly self I have, and to nurture innocence in my life daily. Lord, I want to do your will. I really do. Help me, Lord. That's what we're talking about. Let's have a look at some examples, just quickly. Whoever finds himself frustrated by the decisions of other people and how it affects their lives? Yeah? Yeah, oh, I thought every hand would go up, isn't it? It's true. I mean, we, we elect politicians to make decisions for us. Ever feel frustrated at the choices they make? Okay. Well, 
that's an opportunity for us to give it to the Lord. Is to, you know, is to say, okay, Lord, I'm frustrated by what these people are doing, but I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to let that frustration go, and I'm going to take on your burden to love instead. Here's my frustration. I'll love instead. Another one. Someone comes up to you and says, thank you. You make such beautiful coffee, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, in that moment, you know, you should, well, thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. But tell me, do you own it? In that moment, are you going, yeah, I'm pretty good, aren't I? Or do you find yourself going, thanks, God. You know, without you, I couldn't do that. But thank you for giving me that opportunity to make somebody's life better, to do something that they were really pleased by. It's a moment there. There's a moment where you can be saying, I'm not moving from this post. Don't untie me. Or you can say, Lord, I'm so grateful for you. That you do. That you... It's the sacrifice of Isaac. That's exactly what it is. And here's the third one. Okay, and I, was, I got this one from Ian because Ian and I were talking the other day and, and I was just talking about the message of Sunday and he goes, oh, we all have this side to us, don't we? I go, yeah. Yeah, well, we like the final word, don't we? <laughs> yes, we do. Guilty. He said, we could let others have the final word and let the Lord have the final word. I went, yeah. And when we are, we're letting him untie us and we're letting him lead us and we're carrying his will into our, li into, into, into our lives, isn't it? I mean, so there's three examples. So here's our assignment. In one of these ways or some other way over Easter, look for an opportunity for, to, to exercise humility. To just let it go. That's humility. Let it go. Okay, Lord, I'm frustrated sitting in this traffic. <sighs> let it go. Right now, I'm letting you ride me into Jerusalem, Lord. Take as long as you want, traffic. Just let it happen. Okay, look for an opportunity to practice humility and foster this desire to be led by the Lord. Amen? It is so much better for us as adults. You children have a little advantage right now. But you'll grow up, you'll be adults, and you'll have to deal with the same things that we do. So let's close in prayer now. Let's, Dear Lord, Dear Lord, this Palm Sunday, we recognize our need to yield to you, to carry your will forth into Jerusalem. We love you, Lord. Help us. Amen. I mean, yeah. So I'm going to close the word and then we're going to have a birthday party to celebrate Cause 50th and to celebrate Easter, that time, the special time of year, to love on each other. We will sing a new commandment as we close the word, if you'll play for us. Thanks. One for another, by 
One for another. Dear Lord, the burdens of this life can seem so much. They overwhelm us at times. And we can feel lost and alone and struggling. But when our heart is returned back to you, we find hope and love. We find a light burden, Lord. All you require of us is that we humbly love each other and acknowledge you as the source. This Easter, Lord, may we fulfill that will. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his everlasting peace. Amen. Children, thank you for your...